Jolie here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Mark Tibbs here in London. How are you? Lovely, Jolie. Thank you. Yourself? Yeah, really good. Obviously, uh, meant to be doing white fighting this weekend, but obviously the show goes on. You've got two fighters on the bill uh, yourself. Yeah, disappointing. Dillian's off the show, but um, I'm, I'm surprised and excited that Eddie Earns kept uh, the show running, and it's fantastic news for the young prospects on the show and, and some, obviously, more experienced fighters like Craig Richards. It's uh, in all my time in boxing, I've uh, I never thought this would go ahead. Tell the truth, so hats off to uh, Match and Boxing for going ahead and keeping the boys busy. Yeah. Why does it surprise you? Well, do you know what? It was uh, Sam Jones called me uh, when he knew the fight was off, the big fight, Dillian White fight was off. So I naturally thought, right, the show's going to be pulled, and uh, he said, Oh no, 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 Johnny's Johnny's still fighting. He's uh, He's, he's sold so many tickets, he's, uh, he's going to keep let the show go ahead. And I thought, oh, OK, well, we'll see. And the next day I saw Eddie's statement, so that's off to him, yeah. And at such an early stage in John and Johnny's career, it's vital to get these fights as many as possible? Absolutely. The, uh, the, like you say, at the, the beginning of their career, the busy, the busy they can be, the more experience they, you know, they're going to get, and that's what they need, experience. Good prospects like uh, Johnny Fisher and Johnny Hedges, who I've got out uh, Saturday night, need experience. Yeah, for sure. Now, you just mentioned Sam Jones was the one who mentioned to you that the show was, well, no longer had Dillian White. Is Sam Jones still involved? Obviously, with two fighters with F S Jam. Um, obviously, he's not there anymore. He's moved to Propellum as the promoter. How involved has he been since the departure? To be fair, I haven't spoke to Sam since that phone call. Uh, yeah, so... We don't speak uh, a great deal anyway, only on, you know, we, we have a good working relationship when we have worked together. Obviously, it's, they ain't had many fights uh, just yet, but, you know, uh, I, I guess the, uh, the boys communicate with Sam through, you know, through, through, through our day-to-day -day training. But, uh, yeah, when I have spoke to Sam, he's very organised and uh, he's on it. Yeah, he's on it. How do you expect it to be, obviously, with Adam Morley as the, as the new head of s Boxing? Adam's well, joint. He was joint before, but now it's singly. Well, to be fair, I mean, my, my, my dealings with Adam has always been very, very professional and very smooth. And uh, that's all I can say. And I've only got to look at what they're doing for, uh, for Johnny Fisher or what they've done for Johnny Fisher and for John Hedges. It's, uh, they've, given, they've given them both great opportunities that, uh, that, you, that young, young prospects probably could only dream of, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. What do you think would have happened to this show if it was on Sky and it was pay-per-view? Obviously, it would have been taken off pay-per-view, but you feel like the show would have gone ahead? I don't know, Joe. It's not for me to comment. You know, um, it's, a, it's a good card as it stands right now. It's a really good card. And uh, it's a gonna be a, still going to be a good night of boxing, for sure, with the lineup that's on now. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, exciting fights at the end of the year. Obviously, on the zone, which Ed will be promoting, Tiafimo Lopez versus uh, George Gambosas Jr. That's going to be a great fight. If it if it happens, it's been uh, postponed, rescheduled about five, six times now. No, no. I was just talking to uh, one of the IFL boys, and uh, they're off to America next week. One of them's off to America next week for for a long for a long while, and there's just banging out the list of uh, shows he's doing. I thought, wow, what an experience that this young man's got in front of him. Uh, yeah, for sure. For to go and witness and, and report on all these shows over in Las Vegas. Yeah, it's going to be wonderful. Yeah. What did you make of the show in uh, Las Vegas not so long ago? Obviously, October the 9th, um, Tyson Fury defeating Wilder for the third time. Let's be honest. Wonderful performance. Uh, really, really uh, unbelievable performance. It was a great performance by Tyson Fury and uh, Incredible, incredible, incredible. Really, really put the nail in the coffin that night and uh, it was wonderful. We was, we was ecstatic, all of us, uh, you know, fight fans and over the moon for Tyson Fury. Done it in emphatic fashion. Wonderful, yeah. Obviously, over the last couple of days, there's been a lot of talk with Anthony Josh going over to America training with um, most popular trainers over there. Um, what do you make of that? Obviously, being in a similar position, not that similar, but Dillian White, you were training him for a while and then you no longer are. Kind of. What do you think Robert McCracken's thinking right now? Who knows? Who knows what Robert McCracken's thinking? I believe, uh, I believe it was a very, very b bizarre performance by AJ that night. And uh, 
who knows, you know, I'm not in and around the camp. It's really not for me to say or judge. But um, Rob McCracken's a, he's a great, he's got a great uh, reputation as being a, a good coach. My father, in fact, uh, worked with uh, Rob McCracken, you know, back in the, uh, the Lennox Lewis gym years ago, many years ago, and he says what a good coach he was. And uh, that was that was 20, 20, 25 years ago. So, you know, uh, he's a great, great uh, coach, Robert McCracken. And uh, looking from the outside, I wasn't surprised with the result that, that happened uh, with Usyk because uh, I saw, I heard one or two stories on AJ slimming down a bit and, and starting to box a little bit. And I thought, what's he trying to match uh, Usyk for boxing? He's going to get the wrong game plan here if he, if he thinks he's going down that uh, down that route it's, it's natural what he's got to do for boxing people you know with the size and the speed and the power he's got so that's why uh, that's why we was all a little bit puzzled by the Usyk uh, AJ fight but as in what he's going to do for the future I don't know it's not for me to say but uh, I wish him well in, in whatever he does because we want them titles back <laughs> Would you be frustrated as a trainer if one of your fighters went over to America and trained with other trainers? Well, I'm sure there's been a conversation. I'm sure there's been a conversation between uh, uh, um, um, Robert, Robert, and uh, and AJ. I'm sure there's been a conversation between the two of them uh, before he's uh, gone to do what he's got to do. But you know, personally. Um, you know, it would be a bit. Uh, it's not. A, it's not a nice thing to to be in that position. But we don't know what the relationship's like, so it's unfair for me to say no. I wouldn't like it. I wouldn't like it myself. No. So, so this is the last question on the topic. The fact that he had Joby Clay and Angel Fernandez. Would you welcome other people, or is that not sort of your style? Well, you've got to be very, very careful uh, that uh, too many cooks don't spoil the broth, so to speak. You've got to be very, very careful and. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's very, very simple. It's very, very simple when you're, ex when you're meant to be as experienced as you are, you know, into picking and choosing, you know, who comes into the camp. But uh, I don't know what's going on there. And, uh, but in his style, uh, in, in AJ's style, it just looked a little bit confused. And, uh, you know, so you've got to be careful. You've got to have a, you know, you've got to be strong. You've got to be a strong coach and your, your fighter's got to be uh, with you. In the on the journey, and uh, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. And last question from me then. Obviously, Dillian White meant to be fighting, as we say. Um, it now looks like the Tyson Fury fight and uh, Dillian White is closer than ever. If that fight happens, where, where do you see it going? That's a good fight for British boxing fans and British boxing itself. It's a wonderful fight. Uh, you got the boxer uh, versus the box fighter brawler, so to speak. And uh, well, Tyson's uh, Tyson now can fight or not can fight. I mean, uh, his new team has got out, got that out of him. He gets on the front foot when he can. You know what I mean? So uh, it's going to be a, a great fight. Dillian White versus Anthony Joshua for sure, definitely be a great fight. Do you, um, if that fight happens, do you see it happening next year? And how much smaller is it than AJ versus Fury? Because it's a, it is a huge fight, and although AJ Fury is the one everyone, wanted, this is huge for British boxing, as you say. It's a huge, it's a huge fight for sure. It's a huge fight. I mean, what makes it less attractive? AJ versus Fury now. AJ hasn't got the belts. Um, Dillian's interim, and uh, and he's been ordered to fight F uh, Fury. So yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's an attractive fight. But what's even more attractive is uh, Uzik versus Fury. Is that attractive or what? <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, and I'll back I'll back Fury in that because of the size, his size. IQ wise, they're uh, they're all bang on on point with each other. They both know their game, their business, their craft. Uh, Anthony uh, a, um, Uzik and uh, and and Fury. So that's going to be a real real game of chess that fight but uh, I'll back the bigger man Tyson Fury. Brilliant, really appreciate your time.